Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from this title, this is a question and answer. So I asked on my Instagram and also my Facebook for my followers to submit questions for me to answer and I got quite a few. So yeah, so one thing I didn't thoroughly think about is I film on my phone and the questions are on my phone. And so yeah, I somehow, I thought that I was going to be able to, anyway. Basically, I had to screenshot my questions and email it to myself. But we're just gonna move on from that. Okay, so I got a mix of silly questions and serious questions, so I'm going to try to answer all of these to the best of my abilities. And also, some people don't wanna be shouted out. Shout, yeah, they don't sound right, shouted out. Anyway, so I'm not gonna shout out some people, but yeah. The first question I got was, can you be a Christian and still use curse words like the N word, the C word, or any other derogatory word? Or can you still be a Christian and stick up your middle finger? First of all, I want to say it is not my place to judge whether somebody is a Christian or not. I am not God, I do not know the state or condition of their heart, but I will say that the word says that we should do everything to the glory of God. And there's actually a verse in Proverbs that says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation in my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. And so I won't say that you are not saved if you use derogatory words or if you curse, but I will say that I don't think it's necessary glorifying God. In whatever we do, in whatever we choose to do, it's we are supposed to think about, is this glorifying God? Is this going to bring God glory? And in my opinion, cursing or using other derogatory language or language that is looked at as bad is probably not the best way to be a good representation of Christ. Okay, so the next one is from Miss Short and Sweet, and she said, will you ever do a challenge or a mukbang on your channel? So, I will probably do a mukbang. I'm actually gonna get together with some of my girlfriends in a couple weeks. We're gonna sit down and eat and talk about questions relevant to our culture. And so, yes, I don't know if I will ever do a challenge, maybe. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want to do on my channel. I know I want to do faith and lifestyle, but I don't know how diverse my channel is going to be. But if that's what you all want to see, I'm definitely down to trying some things. The, my One of my questions came from Victorian on Instagram and she says, you got eczema. She's actually one of my friends from college. And the, if y'all don't remember, there was a vine of years ago where this little kid was like, you got eczema? You got eczema? I got what? You got eczema? <laughs> we laugh about that a lot, or we used to laugh about that a lot. So she was being, being silly and posted that. Okay, Afro Spantalia said, how did you become so cool? I don't even know how to answer that. I'm just myself. I just try to be myself. And if people think that that's cool, awesome. If they don't, awesome. Okay, so this person said, I don't wanna shout out, but I want to know what do you like about yourself most? And let's see, what I really like about myself is that I am unwavering. If God has placed a conviction in my heart, it's really hard to change my thinking. And it could make me stubborn as well. And so I think it's a good thing, but it can also be a frustrating thing. And sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with God. Sometimes it's just like, I feel this way, I feel a certain way, and that's what it is. And so it can be very, very hard to change my mind or my point of view on certain things. And I personally know that that's a good and bad thing because sometimes somebody can make a perfectly good point, like no flaws in the point, but because it's different than mine, I'm just like, Well, I guess your point is valid. So yeah, I like that about myself, but I know I could use a little help with it. Okay, so the next question says, if you could do something dangerous once with no risk, what would you do? 
maybe skydiving i mean that looks low-key fun but i always think about the fact like i don't want to low-key have a heart attack or get really scared and my heart just drops and falls out my booty i don't know but i guess that's no risk so probably skydiving or something like that something like really fun and adventurous like that definitely okay so this next question says how do you build intentional relationships with women and what types of practical advice can you give the woman that wants a mentor but can't find one how do you start the conversation okay so this sounds like two questions so how do you build intentional relationships with women this is an interesting question i think for me to answer because i used to not value relationships with women i just i had my girlfriends but as far as like being around a community and like a group of women i used to just have no time for it but am I the Bible study that I'm a part of I'm actually the women's ministry leader and so I think that that's pretty funny how God does things but personally how I foster relationships with women is I think about what I want and I know that's not necessarily I'm not saying this is the best advice but this is how I go off of it I think about what I want and I like to know that somebody cares I like to know that somebody remembers things about me I like to know that somebody even remembers like a hard struggle that I have sh shared or that I'm actually going through. And so I like to pay close attention to those aspects in women. And that's really how I connect with them. And so I really love to keep up with different women throughout the week. If they come to my mind, I'll keep up with them. I'll text them. I'll reach out to them and just let them know I'm praying for them or just reach out to them for a conversation. And then sometimes we even meet up and just get to know each other better so i think relating first is really really key to women to form a relationships with women we really have to make sure we give people a chance and so even if it's someone that you don't know if you'll like or it's someone that you see you see something in them that you like just ask to meet up with them and um have coffee or have dinner or just just to sit down and talk to see if you job well with that person when it comes to finding a mentor i don't think i can give great advice on that because i don't really have a mentor that's something that i'm still working on so i don't think i can answer that fully but yeah as far as connecting with women i love to connect with them by caring about what's going on in their life so i speak stoey as can you sing us a song that's my question so I actually told y'all in one in my sister tag video that me and my sister were actually going to sing a song for you all for one of my videos, but we could not get the song right. And so I still plan to sing y'all a song. I mean, I can give you a little snippet right now. Um, all I want is to live within your love, be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you. Deeper. I sing a little bit. I don't just go around saying I sing. I just sing a little bit. So, Blech. this other person says that they do not want to be named as well. Lord, I got a bunch of humble people on my Instagram. What's your biggest non religious turnoff in a partner? Hmm. Well, I think as women, we're nurturers most women are naturally nurturers and so we like to listen and we like to tend to the man we're talking to but a big turnoff for me is when the man can't listen or when I'm always having to hold him up mentally or I know it's important to be able to speak life into that person and to even boost that man's ego but when he can't listen to me at all when he can't pour into me at all that's that's a turn off for me what's your favorite dorky dance move oh so i love the stanky leg and i would show y'all but it's just not comfortable enough in my room for me to do that um i really cannot dance at all like i cannot dance like one lick of a bit but um i do occasionally um hit the dab on them so yeah i'll show you that but the favorite dorky dance room move is definitely the stanky leg so yeah thank you for watching this video i really appreciate y'all for sticking around this long and i'll see you in my next video